Hello and welcome to another episode of GSC Talk. My name is Sirbhi Vaid and joining me today is a legend when it comes to coaching in football. Just at the age of 28, he became the youngest coach ever to obtain the UEFA Pro license. From Dutch to UAE, from UAE to Saudi Arabia, from Saudi Arabia to Oman, from Oman to Africa, from Africa to India. His coaching services had no geographical boundary whatsoever. With immense pleasure, I welcome Ilko Shatori to our show. Thank you for uh, for having me. Uh, listening to your introduction, uh, <laughs> leave the legend out. I'm trying to be humble. Uh, having said that, uh, listening to the whole the route that I made from from Holland to basically India, Saudi Arabia. I think that's why I lost all my hair. <laughs> the stress of coaching but uh, I'm happy to join you and uh, let's make it a good session yeah sure we are happy to have you here and you go and talking as I as I mentioned you literally had a world tour when it comes to training and coaching football and India were one of the pit stops so tell me what do you think about the football structure in here in terms of the quality of player quality of league and infrastructure Yeah, it, it was a, a big adventure to come to India. Uh, India doesn't have a background or history as football. Uh, but yeah, it is now almost 10 years uh, ago that I started in India, 2012 or 2013, I think. And um, there is development uh, in, in India. But at the same time, the infrastructure uh, is mainly focused on, on the flagship. And that means, uh, in this case, the, the ISL. Uh, there has progression has has been made there but still i believe there's a lot of work to do on the grassroots part because yeah. any any i always compare it to any school of sorry any uh, generation that wants to be successful or any country that wants to be successful you start at the school level uh, and that's the same with football so you need to you, there needs to be more investment in in the lower part of uh, of the football the grassroots part Yeah, agreed, agreed. As you mentioned that you've been a part of ISL as well. You, you've had the first-hand experience of being, you know, um, alongside ISL. So tell me, what do you think about the technical and tactical soundness of the players? Um, as I said, uh, you in your introduction, you, you mentioned where, I all, where I've been. Uh, yeah. And one of the things is... Anywhere you go, it doesn't matter where you go, there is always talent of football, either that is in India, Africa, Holland. Um, in order for that player uh, to develop to a higher level is highly depending on his circumstances, on his environment around him. Yeah. Um, and there I see Indian players have really good technical abilities, but the tactical part, that means the reading, the understanding yeah. Uh, of the football game because football is a highly creative and uh, dynamic sport there are still a lot of improvement can be made over the years that i've been in the isl there was improvement especially um, because they're playing with uh, foreign players around them who yeah. come from outside india where that basically yeah are teachers uh, for for those players but still uh, on that level there is not a comparison to 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 other countries there's still a lot of progress to be made Yeah, there is a long way to go ahead, as you mentioned. But, you know, thinking, thinking about where the players are right now, what do you, what, where do you see? In fact, where do you see Indian football 15 years down the line? Yeah, that, that's a very interesting question. Uh, why? I remember, so 10 years ago, uh, I came to India basically because there was a coach from Holland leading the national team of India, Wim Kuvermans. Uh, and I, I get a chance to come to India. I called him. Uh, I said, how is, how is the situation there? Because I was not really interested to do so. And he and together with the technical director, Rob Bahn at the time, they said India is, um, is a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. But now we are 10, we are 10 years further uh, uh, along the road. There is progress made. But that giant, that feeling of it's going to explode into a, a, yeah, a, a top high level, we're still far away from that. And I'm not being a negative person. I'm not being a, a, I'm just being a realistic person. And that means I think 
the potential the potential is absolutely there especially because it's such a huge country with uh, 1.3 billion people so the quantity is there but now yeah there needs to be certain steps made and i will finish mm -hmm. it off with with uh, uh, why i also worked in countries where i am now in saudi arabia where i'm currently 10 15 years ago they were in also similar situations uh, and their progression it has been uh, much faster and quicker and a lot has to do i go back to the question before with the grassroots yeah. parts yeah yeah so talking about how we have to work on our grassroots levels but do you think with the current squad that we have do a approach change in in the terms of how we play and then picking a coach according to that approach will help create an impact uh, did you say for data approach? No. For, so I am I'm saying we have we have our football, right? We have a long way to go ahead. But in that long term vision, picking a coach who suits the vision, will that be a good approach? Um, first of all, football, you can football is not a product. Football is yeah. the process. Uh, having said that, if you talk about a national team, um, yeah, a national team needs to uh, uh, produce uh, uh, results, so yeah. they need to produce a product. So you need to have a coach when it comes to a national team who is basically able to handle. Uh, let me let me compare it like this: when you have a car that is not fully functioning but still have to compete, uh, that's that's a very realistic uh, uh, comparison. And some sometimes, you, yeah, you need to deal with things that are why you would like to have them to be better and give you more chances to, uh, to get a result. Um, but you need a very smart and good coach who able to handle that. This is, I'm talking about the national team mm -hmm. level. Um, on the club level, yeah, I, now clubs uh, have uh, foreign coaches. I was myself part of it. Uh, there are not a lot of teams that have two, three or four years, the same coach. It's maybe one, uh, maybe two years. So they are not able to help even to build the club uh, on all uh, on all levels, and that is also part of the grassroots part in order to stabilize certain situations. It's more, yeah, I, I always call it the Bollywood uh, factor that it needs to be right away uh, fantastic, good, and and the way it's perceived, uh, then we're happy. But the moment that is not good, we right away go to the other side, and that is. There is some improvement in that, but there is still uh, uh, more stability to be created there. Okay, so stability is one thing that is missing right now is, is what you're trying to say, right? Yes, if you look, just go look at, at all ISL clubs, what is the flagships of, for, uh, flagship for football, how many times they change the coach. I was part of, yeah. of uh, Kerala Blasters, where we mm -hmm. started a really good project. Uh, the management also had a very great idea. But at the end of the road, uh, uh, still had to go. I had basically a three-year contract, but after one year, yeah, I, I had to go. This is not a blame or whatever, but as an example, I think if you check yeah. at all the clubs, every year they almost see a new, new coach. There are now a few teams that continue with the same coach, but that is the first time, I think, in uh, yeah, since a long time in, in ISL. So more stability is something that we need. But talking about coaching, what methodology would do you adopt um that's always that's the same interesting question because football is uh, uh it's very easy to 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 i like to work i like to think very logic and and that people can understand it um if you would take a a, a chef who creates i just take a tomato soup a tomato soup there are a few ingredients uh Tomatoes, we keep it very simple, tomato, water, and salt, just for the sake of conversation. Um, if you know these ingredients, then it's very easy to reproduce the same tomato soup every time. There will be small, small differences. Football is not like that. Uh, football doesn't have certain ingredients that you always can use in order to rebuild the, the same uh, result. So as a coach, you need to understand the dynamics of football. Uh, and I have a framework, I have a blueprint where I think these dynamics are very important. Uh, one of those uh, um, 
to make it simple understanding, you have a, have a dynamic uh, in offense, you have a dynamic in defense. And I have certain principles that the way I like to play football, in this case, I like to dominate football. I'm not a, I'm not a, a simple example. Mourinho is more a defensive coach. I like more of being an attacking coach. So I look there for uh, a way to stabilize my team. Those ingredients of those teams is everywhere different because you every time have different players. Mm. But the core idea, the core idea is, is for me to sum it up. Uh, I like to dominate and play attacking football. And in, the, in a defensive way, I like to be very stable and always compare it to, to a base of a house uh, where, where uh, that stability. If you want to play attacking football, you need to be stable defensively. But there are a lot of details in there. Uh, and when they ask, what is your philosophy in football? Yeah, it's, it's not that easy. It's not too easy just to, 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 to sum that up because football is very unpredictable. And there are too many elements, uh, too many variables that can steer up your uh, your philosophy. Yeah. So now that you mentioned that you have a philosophy that is dominating and you and there are ind- ingredients which keep on changing. So for example, ingredients are players. So do, do your philosophy revolve around the player or the club that you're coaching or it revolves around the principle that you have? Uh, I have to say you have interesting questions. Uh, also, this question is, if I, as a Dutch person, I'm from Holland, travel to India, uh, I will have to adapt to the culture of India. If I apply my principles, uh, my Dutch principles, my Dutch culture, 100% it will clash. So there has to be a healthy mix of, and that's the same thing when you go to a certain club. Not all clubs have the same football culture. So you have the country culture, then you have the football culture. Um, so I will always adapt first, uh, try to adapt to the cultural environment of the club. That is, for instance, what kind of, what type of football do the supporters want to see? And then I work backwards to yeah, uh, apply my own principles that, that match or that that have an uh, uh, how do you call it? Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the English word is. Uh, I know it in Dutch, but no problem. Um, you, you try to find that that's mixing or matching with the, with the, the club culture, mm. and then you come to the last part. You always depend on budget. So I can want to have certain qualities, but are we able to get them financially? So then you get in another layer of problems. Maybe we don't get one, so we have to go for a, a lesser option. That makes it even more difficult for a coach to uh, to apply his principles and the club principles. So it's a very complex process, but I adapt to, to my environment and to take it from there. Okay, so it's mixing, matching, adapting, learning, evolving, changing at every step. And is that the funda or is that the mantra behind your success? Because we've seen that the teams that you have coached, even though they have faced a lot of hurdles or challenges, but they always manage to come out with flying colors. So what is the, what is the mantra or the recipe behind your success? Yes, that, that is uh, absolutely true. That is one from one side a, uh, a burden. And from the other side, I'm happy to have been walking that, that road. What do I mean by that? Is I have learned to work in surroundings where uh, you have to be very creative in order to get certain results and to go forward. That means certain tools were not available. Uh, If you don't have tools, certain tools, you need to be creative and find different solutions. That means you learn how to improvise, you learn how to adapt, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Having said that, most of my career, I ended up in in basically, and I I call it cleaning up after what was uh, before me in order for me to start rebuilding. Uh, But I would love to have a a more chance of getting in a situation where things are a little bit more perfect, where you have a little bit more time to prepare, uh, because I'm sure uh, I have a lot of ability in order to to do that. And that is not an arrogance, or that's more of a a hope, because uh, uh, in most of my career, I I, uh, had to work in a situation where you have to rebuild something and clean up after what was before me. And that is, that is not an easy job. It made me a better coach, but I would also love to, to show that on a, on a different level where things are a little bit more settled. 
So he was too hoping that you show it on different levels and you you prove it in your own little way. Uh, but tell me, how much does techno technology right now helps in football, sports technology? Yes, um, football is a sport that there is not one coach ever in the world that won all his games or is is guaranteed to bring success. That already means that football is not a scientific uh, a product that you scientifically can. I go back to the to the the soup that there are ingredients that you can put in that you always will always have success. Now, having said that, um, I am an uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, I like to to use science uh, and the technology in order to to help uh, become a better uh, coach, become a better team. Uh, one of the things that I'm very interested in football is the physical part, uh, meaning that uh, when a player plays a 90-minute game and he has to play another one in the whatever in three days, four days, that there is an exact science that can tell me if a player physically is uh, recovered. Why do I say that? Because a football season is normally very long, uh, and over time small things um, accumulate and you get injuries and one of the things that would that i would like to have and that is some clubs i'm sure they have it already on the top level is but that you have a, a, a way of measuring the body that it is recovered so you can have less chances of uh, of injuries that's one of my main focuses uh, another one that is very interesting to 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 look at is if the, is there is software that can uh, analyze football in a way uh, that is not just based on on data that means on uh, on numbers that means on how many sprints i made but also it sorry how it explains why or uh, how things happen this normally relates more on on my own my own eye my own interpretation so these are things i would love to explore but i'm not a big fan of implementing a lot of science into football. Okay. okay. So, as you mentioned that there are certain things that you would want to explore. Are there certain things that you all, you already have explored? Are there technologies that you've used or chosen to be a part of your team performance? <clears throat> yes. Uh, a very simple thing is, uh, first of all, a video analysis. Uh, I use uh, one of the things in football is uh, um, that... I think in anything in live, but because football is a very dynamic sport, uh, you need to have feedback uh, that gives you uh, uh, that makes you able to players to see what's happening, the visual part of it. Because it's a, I need to be able to stop a, a video and say to a player, "See, listen here, you're in the wrong place." If you don't have that feedback, and I have to do that only by talking, players sometimes will not understand. So, video analysis is very important. Uh, there is a, a GPS system uh, that players use, or and uh, uh, that is basically also part of the physical uh, physical part of football. That tells me how many sprints a player made in a game. Uh, so let's say that a player made twenty sprints in a game. I just make it simple to understand. Now, in football, the last part, the last fifteen minutes of football are very important. So it helps me to maybe design a program, a training program, where I make that player, that specific player, make 21 or 22 sprints for the next upcoming time. Um, why do I say that? Because that last sprint can make the difference, especially in the last 10, 15 minutes. So GPS system has all kinds of information that you can use uh, and, uh, how do you call it, uh, use that information in order to have your know, better training uh, facilities, or sorry, better training programs and also give feedback to the players. So these these two things I, I always use or try to use uh, whenever the club has the facilities for it. Also, uh, GPS is not everywhere, but these are things that I worked with and, and still working with. Okay, okay. So technology is definitely helping us evolve and learn and grow. But when it comes to, when it comes to instincts and when it comes to intuition and gut feelings, it's all it all depends on a coach, right? So yes. one advice that you would want to give to a young coach to be for her or him to be better at their job. 
Um, I think, uh, first of all, I, that's basically also my overall feeling or philosophy in life, however you want to call it. Um, uh, any problem, any problem that I face, I will always approach it in a logic way. That means I try to find uh, the, the sequence, what happened. After that, uh, I will approach, of, I will apply my feelings. So that means uh, I have the logic. If I need to make a decision, I'll then will apply my feeling like, does it feel good? And or intuition, whatever you want to call it, I use. I don't do it the other way around. I still see a lot of, of uh, uh, way, the way people approach life or approach even football in this case is they see a certain problem or see something in front of them. They uh, apply uh, the feeling to it, like how does it feel to me? And then find the logic that fits it. And that's a whole different way. So you can always find a certain logic that fits your problem. And I always try to be objective. Uh, and from that process, what I just mentioned, yeah, uh, along the way, you will find uh, uh, um, um, find out the best way to do things. But as I said, football is very unpredictable. Uh, so the logic sometimes is even difficult to find. But for any coach out there, look at logic, use your intuition, and along the way, follow your own vision. Don't try to copy, don't try to imitate. Take things that you can, can use from other coaches because it's not like we reinvented the wheel uh, and uh, try a lot of things because it's all about trial and error and from that you uh, you will learn don't overthink anything in life try to keep it simple okay try to keep it simple uh, try your own permutations and combinations that is what your advice is thank you so much Elko. thank you so much for joining us it was a pleasure to have you here same for me, and hopefully I had a, had a good con contribution and that people had to so get some useful information from it. And uh, thank you and good luck and uh, till we meet again. Till we meet again. Thank you so much.